Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. We're talking about a simple key, a principle that will help you abide in the secret place, to enter in and abide there. So join with me and I will share insight uh, from Smith Wigglesworth. And I pray that his quotes will give you greater clarity on this very powerful message. And Father, I would just ask from my heart that this word would truly minister life to each person, be a fire in their bones. Father, we're living in a challenging hour and we need to know how to abide in the secret place and have that relationship with you. Jesus, we want to know you. You are the living word. Come and let the word have greater depth and vibrancy in our life. Let it impact, change, and transform us. Holy Spirit, show us, teach us. You are the teacher. And in the name of Jesus, we receive you as our teacher. Open the word and bring forth understanding of it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Now, starting with Psalm 119, verses 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway. And I just want to really start with this. What is the value of the word in your life? The word. You know, a lot of us, we look at the word and it is a book. It's a nice book. We may even spend time and read it. We may seek to understand it, but it remains a book. If I go to Revelations 3, verses 8 and 10, it says, I know your deeds. And God is talking uh, to the church of Philadelphia. Behold, I put before you an open door which no man can shut, because you have little power and have kept my word, and, I have, and have not denied my name. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I will also keep you from the hour of testing which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Now, let me share something really quick from Smith Wigglesworth. He said, the Lord has revealed to me a new order concerning the word of God. This is called the book of life. It is called the spirit of life. It is called the son of life, the word of life, the testimony of the new covenant, which has been shed in the blood. There it is, the Bible. And so we've got to understand, we've got to lay hold of what is the value the word has in our life? What does it mean? What does it represent? Uh, and do we intellectually lay a hold of it? Or do we get a hold of it by the Spirit? Now, we're going to talk about the secret place. And the secret place is what you do in secret, when no one's around. When you have the opportunity to do whatever you want, good or bad, you can go on the internet and surf good things or bad things. You can read a good book or a bad book. You can watch a good movie or a bad movie. There's a lot of things you can do. It's your time. And there's nobody watching you. There's nobody forcing you. But you do because it's something you want to do. And that is a time period where if we will take it and invest it in the Lord and go after him because, God, I love you. You are the desire of my heart. You are my everything. Because what we do in that secret is often what we desire to do, what we really want to do. Many people work jobs because they need the money. But when they get home, they want to do the things that they really want to do. And so what do you really want? And the word, that relationship with the Lord must be what's most important, what's greatest to you. And you have to learn by the Spirit to see it in a different perspective. That it goes from simply being a book to being life. Now stay with me. Smith went on to say, I hold it before you and it's no more than any other printed page without the spirit of revelation. It is a dead letter. It is lifeless. It has no power to give regeneration. It has no power to cause new creation. It has no power to cause a new birth apart from the Spirit. It is only print. And many people, that's the place it remains. Now, you can put it on somewhere great place. You can honor it and declare it the most holy thing that you have. You can even worship it. But it remains a dead book. And there's so many people that the Bible has remained dead. Yet, it's the most powerful force in the universe. The enemy hates the Word. He wants to stop the Word. And he's tried to, to destroy the Jewish nation because they brought forth the Word. And he hates Christians 
whether you're a backslider or on fire, because he knows that at any moment, if you lay hold of the word, you can cause damage. There's something about this word that we need to understand that's going to teach you how to abide in the secret place. But it has to go beyond simply being something printed, simply being something, a document. And that's going to take the Holy Spirit to do. See, the secret place is where I have an appointment. I have an encounter and a fellowship with the Lord God through the Holy Spirit. He is the teacher. Now, many people have looked in various sources, and I'm grateful for the gifts. God gave gifts, and He will use people that can bring such a great word, and it can help spark a fire in you. It can help open the door. But that revelation, I need to get into the secret place and say, Holy Spirit, now teach me. Teach me. Because I need to get this in my spirit. I need to receive this in my spirit. Smith said this, But as the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, is in us, we breathe the very nature of the life of the new creation. And it becomes a quickened word. It becomes a life-giving source. It becomes the breath of the Almighty. It becomes to us a new order of the Spirit. If I read Psalm 119, verse 11, Your word have I treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Now, I'm going to give it a lot of scripture because it's such a powerful message. What do you treasure? What do you hide in your heart? You hide it because it's a treasure. And I want so much to lay hold of this term treasure because that's critical. This is everything to me. There are people that paid a great price to get this to you because they understood the value of it. And today it's become commonplace and we've lost understanding of what those words mean, what those words can do, how those words can change the life of an individual and change a nation. Those words are the, uh, what hold the whole universe together. Those words. And there's something about this word, this living word, and you're called to have an encounter with it, to come in and meet with it. And if you do, you will find that God always has such a word in season that he can speak and bring life, break off things that have been holding you. He can release from you the weights through a word. We see in the Gospels that through one word, He healed the people. Through one word, He can change your whole life. Just one word from heaven and everything can be changed. And the call is, will you come? Will you make a decision in this hour in the secret where no one is looking? When you can do everything else and say, God, I want to meet with you by your spirit in the word. I want to have an encounter because we know from Hebrews 11, verse 6, that He is, and that He is the reward of those that diligently seek Him. My reward is, I'm, I want to meet you. I want that encounter with you. And I realize, see, I go back to the first verse I quoted. It's a light. My understanding now, if, how do I go forward? How do I address this? How do I do that? I need the Word. See, we've lived in this place where we've had all these solutions. We've been able to work out how to do this, how to do that, how to, you know, overcome. But we've come to an hour where everything's been challenged. And you need to understand that the Word has the answer. That God can speak. And all of a sudden, as you open this book, He can take one verse and give you the very answer that you need for the situation that you are facing. In 2 Peter 1.4, for by these he granted to us precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world by lust. We're going further here, that all of a sudden I'm not just reading, but now there's things speaking to me, promises of who I am, that I can now understand my identity, my inheritance. And as I take a hold of them, I wrap myself around them. I become connected. I look at the Orthodox Jews 
and you can tell them because, of course, they observe the law, the Old Testament law. And so I can look at them and their mannerism and the way they do things and their appearance. You were called to observe the law of the Word, which is the law of the Spirit. So this is the Word written on my heart, and it's out of this love. Not legalistically, but out of a love, because I know who He is, and He's the real Word. And He now shows me, guides me. He is with me, and He shows me and leads the steps of the righteous. And I become a partaker as these promises get in me. Do you know these promises have spiritual DNA in you? They are doing something in you to bring you into this place of being transformed, made into His image, if you are willing to be pliable, soft, not resist, but receive the Word as it is an authority. Receive the Holy Spirit as He is the teacher. And realize that He's right, I'm wrong. And I'm here to simply be the student and listen and receive and yield and allow it to work in me. And the degree that you do and realize that the Word is Jesus and you see Jesus in the Word. And the degree that you see Jesus in the Word is the degree that you become like Him. As we see Him face to face in the Word. Matthew 12, 34b and 35. For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man brings forth out of his good treasure what is good, and the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. Now, let me share a couple things from Smith Wigglesworth, and I want to share this. This is so good. That is beautiful. The Spirit moving, the Spirit giving, the Spirit speaking, the Spirit making life. Can't you hear the Master say, My word is spirit and life. And he adds, Only by the Spirit can we understand what is spiritual. We cannot understand it. We have to be spiritual to understand it. No man can understand the Word of God without his being quickened uh, by the new nature. The Word of God is for the new nature. The Word of God is for the new life, to quicken mortal flesh into this order. See, in the secret place, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit takes that which is in the treasury of the Father's heart for you. Because He's the good and perfect Father. He is a good treasury in His heart. Of good treasures. Perfect. And He wants to, by the Spirit, go heart to heart. So if you come into the secret place, I am not getting it from my head knowledge. I am not looking at it from an academic understanding. But rather, in the secret place, it is heart to heart, the Spirit of God taking those treasures from the very heart of the Father, and out of an abundance, pouring out into me what the Father thinks of who I am and what is mine in Him. And those words changing me because they are getting into the heart and from the very heart transforming me. It's a heart change that starts, and it will continue to change every part of your being. It will begin to renew your mind. It will begin to renew your feelings. And it will bring your body into alignment with the will of heaven. It's through His Word. But it has to be in the secret place, not just intellectually reading, but allowing the Spirit of God to so speak that is the Father speaking from the abundance of His heart and the good treasures in it to you and pouring into you good treasures so that there's an overflow. And that's one of the things you will discover. What's the value of the Word in your life? You can tell by the abundance of what comes out of your mouth. Because it's a treasure and I've stored it, I've fed upon it. Now I'm not talking about putting on the show in church where we've disciplined ourselves and we know what to say. I'm talking about the real you. And you know the real you and what's in you. And what's overflowing from you. And it needs to be. And we have to understand we need the Holy Spirit to so translate it, to so interpret it, to so put it into us. We have to receive and acknowledge the Holy Spirit and realize that this Word is for that new person. And it causes us to spiritually to grow up and mature. 
It brings forth with us everything we need spiritually to live this life out. You cannot live this life without the Word. Smith said this, My, I hope you got it. For I tell you, it has changed me already. It's all new. The Word of God never is stale. And that's what I love. God always has a fresh, freshly baked now word for you that is perfect. It has the perfect instruction, the perfect insight, wisdom for what you face right now. And God wants to give you fresh daily manna. You cannot live off of a stale bread, off of yesterday's manna. They were taught that. And he was preparing them spiritually to understand the need to daily go after and have this now relationship, feeding off a now word from heaven. Father, what are you saying to me now, today? Many people get hurt because they've lost sight of this living line of fellowship, of this abiding, of this now living spiritual word being fed into them, changing. Or they've had a conduit where it's gone through somebody else and they've not taken the time to feed off it personally, to get it personally. And they've been hurt and damaged in the church because that person becomes the mediator between them and Christ. You have to go right to Him. Jesus, no person in the way. Now, thank God for gifts. I'm not knocking good gifts that can ignite, equip, and help. But you need to have that one and one relationship that has to be strong now and real. And everything else, every other gift should be strengthening this now call, this now relationship and the intimacy that you have personally with the Lord, not stealing from it, not trying to um, substitute it, but always enhancing and encouraging it. In Acts 12, 24, but the word of the Lord continued to grow and multiply. And we know that one of the prayers is that the word would increase and bear much fruit in you because the word can help it grows it increases and i love that you know you open the word and your fellowship with the lord he says a couple of words he takes one verse and all of a sudden you can write a book on it because there's so much revelation on it and i've had people share you know this verse god did this and it changed my life and I listened to that, and I'm like, how did you get that out of that verse? But it came right from the very heart of the Father to their heart. And it did something. See, a lot of us are trying to get it to go through the head. And maybe God spoke from heart to somebody else's heart. And now we're trying to get it to our head, to our heart. It don't work that way. It's got to go from heart to heart and then to the head. The head needs to be taught from the heart, taught from this relationship where it is real, tangible. Smith said this, living bread, eternal bread, eternal life. Oh, the brightening of the countenance, the joy of the new nature, the hope that thrills us, the bliss that awaits us. Oh, the glory forever will never decay. decay. In this word, it begins to impart to you that glory, that new nature. It begins to change you. And it should bring to you, every time you open it, that you would be like those that walked on the road to Emmaus and met Jesus. It causes a fire in my bones. It causes a joy. It causes a hope. I may be having a rough day, but all of a sudden I meet with the Lord in the word and I lift it. All of a sudden, faith arises. All of a sudden, I can see and I know I can face tomorrow. Why? Because there's a living now word in me. And it produces a now hope, a now love, and a now faith. In John 8, 31-32, Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth that you know will make you free. If you continue, if you continue to abide, I don't care where you were yesterday. Are you continuing to abide? And I would pray if you get one thing out of this is the need to continue to abide. The reason so many backslide, the reason so many get derailed is they stop having this abiding or they've had some uh, way around it. They've gone through somebody else. They've been living off somebody else's revelation of the word. And they've not got into the secret place and said, Father God, I'm here for you. 
would you speak to me through the word? Holy Spirit, you're my teacher. Open it. Give me eyes to see, ears to hear. Show me. And just take the time and invest it and begin to read. And say, teach me. And you don't go by what you feel. You don't go by situations you trust. Well, I didn't hear anything. But just keep trusting. Keep sowing that word in you. Keep reading it. Just trusting. I found there's times, and I'm just reading this word in the secret place. God, open my heart. And I'm just pouring it in. And all of a sudden, he will disturb me at the strangest of times. I'll be going to brush my teeth, and all of a sudden, he says, I want to share something with you. And he'll open up the scripture. I'm like, you could have told me that this morning when I was reading it. His timing is different. But as you continue to pour it in, pour it in, and pour it in, all of a sudden he knows, ah, it's a treasure to them. It means something. And he'll meet with you. And he'll begin to fellowship with you. Because I found, found true fellowship is spontaneous and real. And God wants spontaneous, real fellowship. And he wants what 1 John talked about in chapter 1. That which we've seen, touched, felt, heard. We make known regarding the word of God, regarding the word of life. And he wants it real to you in this hour. He wants to have a life to it. He wants you to touch and feel heart to heart. And so God wants to so meet with you in the secret place. So when no one else is looking, what you do with your time and what you do with the investment of your energy is critical. Will you sow the word into your life? Because as you sow it and you allow the Spirit of God to, to open your ears so you hear it, it is sown in your heart. And as you allow the Holy Spirit to say, any issue that is hindering, blocking the word, let us get dealt with, exposed, removed. I want to walk clean. I want to have good soil in my heart. I want to allow the word to produce, to increase. Because the word will produce according to its kind. It will always increase. It will always reproduce. And it will reproduce according to his kind. More of him. More of his glory. More of his likeness. More of his peace. More of his joy. I want to finish with this. May God reveal to us our portion in this Holy Ghost, Smith said. That we may see how wonderful that the Lord has in his mind for us. I want you to see security, absolute security, where there will be no shaking, no trembling, no fear. Absolute soundness in every way, knowing that as sure as the city is formed, you are going out to the city. Because as you spend this time, God wants to so reveal your identity. And the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance the fullness of the Lordship of Jesus, what it means. And He will show you what Jesus did for you personally and how it impacts you and your identity, your inheritance, and how to step in and receive that, how to walk in this hour as a child of God. What are your rights and the authority given? The Word. God will not violate His Word. He will not go around the Word. His Word. And the call of this hour is the perseverance of His Word, the keeping of His Word. So I'm telling you and encouraging you that a simple principle of giving the Word such value in your life and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to open this Word, to teach you, show you the Word. Take the time in secret. Take time where you could do a lot of other things and say, God, I want your Word. It has to mean something to you. And say, I want the rich treasures of your heart. Speak to me through your Word. Impart rich treasures into my heart that change me, that transform me, that have an answer for what I'm facing, that enable faith to arise, that cause me to be more than a conqueror through you. Give me truth. Give me wisdom. Give me discernment, knowledge, and understanding. Your Word, let it purify. Let it sanctify. The Word. You were cleansed by the Word. The Word. It has to be living alive. And it has to mean something to you. It has to be a treasure. And you have to recognize it's the treasure of His heart. And you have to desire that with everything within you. And pursue it. In secret. Amen. Well, I pray that this message blessed you. I pray you're getting it. And I would ask, if it touched you, would you please like, share, and subscribe? Because as you do so, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google to reach more people. And I thank you for that.
I would encourage you, would you consider joining a prayer partnership? It costs you nothing. You simply go to robertpairs.org and go to the partner page. As I always like to say, if you want to be a financial partner, great, we like those. They're great and we're very appreciative of those because they help us do great things. But I know some people don't have it and I also know the most important thing is prayer. And that through prayer, we pray in the right word and that that word has impact. I want prayer partners that are praying for the partners because this is an hour we need to be praying for each other. As a prayer partner, you have partners praying for you and you're invited to our Zoom meetings. You get our email newsletters and in the Zoom meetings, I share messages that I don't always put on YouTube or anywhere else and you get ministry time. I also believe there's a coming a day soon where we'll stand before the Lord and all the lives touched and changed. All of us, partners together, share in that reward and that's priceless. And I thank you for all those standing with me, whether you join the partnership or not, or just pray on the side. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I want you to know that you're loved, appreciated in the name of Jesus. Please check out more in the secret place. Some people say, where do I start? Start on simply the secret place. And I'll work in some other simple intros um, to help you understand the secret place. I pray they bless you, encourage, strengthen you to live boldly and have an intimacy with Jesus in this hour. Thank you for watching. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.